Nevada. Pastor Murray, can you tell or explain to us the time order of events that's going to come going to come to pass before Antichrist when he is here, before Christ comes and when he is here, before he establishes his kingdom? Well, that would be quite a chore. Well, we know some things that have to happen. The one world system must come into being. Right now it isn't All right, so the one he, what do he say? The one world system has. Well, that would be quite a chore. Well, we know some things that have to happen. The one world system must come into being. The one world system must come into being. All right. So the, wow, man, I, that that's unbelievable uh, to make that claim. Okay. So, I mean, to me, I I don't mean to sound so harsh, but to me, it sounds like. A person that has absolutely no understanding of the Bible at all. It's unbelievable. Daniel talks about four beasts until the end of the world. And the four beasts are four kings and their kingdoms. And then the end will come. Alright, so we know that the first three beasts are mentioned by Daniel and the fourth beast is not but we can deduce that the fourth beast is the Roman Empire because once we get to the New Testament we see that the Greek Empire is no longer in power and that Caesar Augustus has the power to to make a decree that the whole world should be taxed. So he's in charge, in control of the whole world. Now, if we go to like Revelation 17, for example, where it says the beast that was and is not and yet is, we by that we can deduce that the beast that was was the Roman Empire and is not and yet is transitioned from a physical empire into a spiritual empire and that's essentially confirmed when it mentions the great whore that sits upon many waters now the great whore pretends to be the bride and the bride is the church or people of God the whore pretends to be the bride it's a prostitute it's a fake wife it's a counterfeit it poses itself think of a, of a prostitute in real life a prostitute performs the duties of the wife but she is not the wife so also the great whore spoken of here in Revelation 17 she is not the bride of Christ she is a counterfeit, a pretend to be bride of wife. She is not the bride. She's not the wife. She's a fake. All right. So that's that's why it says the beast that was and is not and yet is because it went from a physical empire, the Roman Empire into a spiritual empire known today as the Roman Catholic Church. All right, I mean, it's as clear as day. Now, well, Arnold Murray and a whole bunch of other people, probably a billion other pastors, huh, teach this idea that there is no fourth king. The fourth king has not come. Or are you saying that Daniel lied and there's a fifth king coming? All right. So, th no. The Bible's not lying to us. The Bible's absolutely true. The people that are saying that the Antichrist must come first are the liars. Think about this. When Jesus comes... Are you, is he going to find you preaching Antichrist? Or is he going to find you preaching the gospel? 
right now it isn't really even being tried. So everybody wants to take a deep breath and relax. We've got some things that must transpire before the false one can appear. As it is written in Daniel chapter um, 11, 20, we got to get rid of the razor of taxes. we got to get rid of the razor of taxes. What's, it, what's that mean? I, you know, to me, that's that sounds too political, really. And, and it totally ignores, in my opinion, Daniel 11. But let's go to that. The razor of taxes. Then shall stand up in his estate a razor of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. But within few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Uh, so, I mean... I don't want to do a whole study here on Daniel 11. But this is not separate from the fourth beast. Or the four kingdoms that Daniel's talking about. And this is not talking about the United States of America. You just did a flyby there without explaining at all what you're talking about so anybody that raises taxes we got to get rid of him is that really what you're saying come on that that's got to happen we don't have to god will do it okay and time marches on and then we know that after the false one appears then we have five months with him his, and his <clears throat> we have five months with him Okay. All right. First of all, let's go back. Just let me make this point here that it's not the Antichrist comes and then it's the end. All right. Jesus tells us to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He even says that the gospel must be preached first. And then the end shall come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So you want God to find us preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the good news that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but has everlasting life that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit all right so when we are born of the spirit of God we shall never die and we can never lose our salvation we are sealed secured sanctified forever in the Lord Jesus Christ his little ones, two and a half months specifically with uh, Satan as Antichrist. Okay, so. His, and his little ears, then we have five months with him. Uh, his, and his little ones, two and a half months specifically with. Five months, two and a half months. You said five months and then you altered it to two and a half months to fit whatever goofy doctrine you're trying to preach. Alright. I mean. You got five months with the Antichrist. Is that what it says in Revelation 9? And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Talking about us, we're going to be tormented for five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. I don't know what that's like, but I bet it hurts. Right, so I feel like we almost have to do a study on each one of these because people like Arnold Murray, who he himself doesn't understand, is preaching a doctrine that does not make any sense and it does not line up with scripture. What's this talking about? The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven 
unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And then, okay, I, you know, I could get into the whole thing. Let's see here. The sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed. Okay, now hold on a second. Let's see if I can get to the next. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head and his face was as it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. And it talks about the seven thunders. Oh, yeah. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God shall be finished. And as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. All right, so to, to avoid getting into every single thing, if I could roughly summarize, go back here. Um, talking about the seventh seal. All right, which is the end of the world. All right, once the seventh seal is loosed, it's the it's the end of the world. The sixth. Let's go back to the sixth seal. I mean, for crying out loud, man! Crying out loud. Where, where are we at here? I think we go one back, one more. Right, right here. So we go. We can find the fifth seal. All right, so this is this is kind of cool. So the fifth seal has been opened, and when the sixth seal is open, that's when the sun becomes dark, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, if you cannot line these up, if you cannot connect the dots, then you don't understand it. Okay, now, and again, I'll tell you, Jesus explains it better than anybody, right? So, right here is the end of the world. The sun darkened, moon shall not give her light, stars of heaven shall fall, the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Lo, there was a great earthquake, the sun became black as sackcloth. Sack cloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their place now think about this you think this is different you're not able to connect the dots <laughs> It's not a different end of the world. There's only one end of the world. If there were two different, if there were two ends of the world, the first end of the world wouldn't be the end of the world. This is simple, logical, common sense stuff, man. So now we got the end of the world. All right, and we got the seven angels sounding, the seventh seal, and the seventh angel. And where are we at here? One more chapter. And then we got the five months of the wrath of God that is being poured upon the people. This is not, the Antichrist does not come after the end of the world. I mean, really. What are you preaching? The problem is, you know, there are so many people that are preaching this Hollywood scenario. You know, I've not seen the Left Behind movies, but I can tell you that the Left Behind movies preach this idea that people will be raptured up, and then all the unsaved people will get one more chance to be saved. And the Antichrist will rise up. I mean, really, this is what these guys are preaching in a Hollywood movie. As they're preaching a Hollywood movie as it was the gospel of Christ. And that's not the case at all. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. There are no more chances. There is no more time 
to be saved. And one thing I always like to say, what are you going to tell Jesus when he comes back? He, you can't come back yet? The Antichrist ain't here yet? You're looking for the Antichrist when you should be looking for Jesus Christ. With uh, Satan as Antichrist. And then seventh trump sounds and the true Christ returns. And at that instant, we're all changed into spiritual bodies. God does give us an exact and specifics concerning his return. When the two witnesses die in the streets of Jerusalem, in exactly three days, Christ will return. So then, we, then those that understand will know exactly at that time. John from Pennsylvania. <laughs> wow, that's... I don't want to get into another different... I mean, really, you're just throwing words out there that are from the Bible, phrases, words that are from the Bible, and applying it to the Hollywood movie without fully understanding each mention. I believe he said uh, the two witnesses will come and then Jesus will come. Is that, is that what he said? Uh, who cares? The two witnesses are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of Earth. I, I guess in the, in the movie, you, what you got? Two people that are gonna come. Oh, know, and then I don't know. I don't know what the movie is, and I don't even care. The, the bottom line is the end of the world is not complicated. Nobody teaches it better than Jesus Himself. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, if you're preaching an end time a doctrine, right, an end time scenario that conflicts with Jesus, or uh, what's that word, presupposes, or whatever that word is, that Jesus didn't tell you everything. You know, like, uh, he he kept some stuff back from you, and you got to listen to me because I got the secret. No, no, no. No, you ain't got nothing, Jack, but a bucket full of lies. You And you don't have understanding either. If you had faith in what you read, and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you would understand everything simply. By reading Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. Nobody explains it better than Jesus himself. We can go to, Mark, we can go to Matthew 13. And he gives the parable. You think he's hiding stuff from you? Oops, wait a second. That's not what I'm looking for. He gives the parable of the wheat and the tares. And the harvest is the end of the world. You know, living here in Iowa, and it's obvious what the harvest is. When the harvest, when it's fall and it's harvest time, you gather all the good stuff. You know, we have a lot of corn, and soybeans, and all that good stuff. But we have a lot of cornfields, and so come time, the cornfield or the corn is gathered, and you know they obviously they. In this parable with the wheat and the tares, the wheat is gathered. The tares, which is not the wheat, is gathered and burned. It's no good. The, the wheat is stored in the barn. That's the saved. The tares are the unsaved. It's that simple. It's not Jesus comes... And then the Antichrist comes, and then you get one last chance to be saved. You know, it's not some kid being born with a tattoo on the back of his head who's going to rise up and rule the world. That's Hollywood stuff. That's not in the Bible. Jesus tells us plainly. What is that verse that he says? Uh, I spake openly to the world. 
I ever taught in the synagogues and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. What Jesus teaches us in Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21 explains it all. He's not hiding nothing from us. He's told us everything. 